All right, everyone, here we go. Thank you all for joining me today. Okay, so I want to talk about Burner Boy and the backlash that he has been receiving from the Black American community regarding a comment he made, uh, which has seemed to spark a lot of outrage with the with that community. Uh, and so this is because of an interview he did with British GQ uh, about a year ago, where he was asked in that um, uh, in that interview uh, what he thought was behind his rise and his popularity with his music genre Afrofusion and Afrobeats in the UK, and why it was that he was more popular in the UK than in the United States. And in that interview, Barnabur responds by say, talking about the two cultures, the differences between the two cultures and the two countries. Now, somewhere along the line, you know, in his comment, a lot of people took exception to uh, what he said regarding uh, what they alluded to that he said that black Americans did not have any culture. And so this angered a lot of people from the black American community. Here's a clip of Burner Boy. Uh, addressing this backlash. And I want you to take a listen to him, and I'll be right back. And your whole career, you've always preached unity and bringing black people together. But there's one quote that's been inescapable for you at this point, and everybody says that you once said or alluded to black Americans not having any culture. So they were like, well, wait a second. Why is he wearing shoes that look like Tim's and sampling an American song <laughs> if black Americans have no culture? See me, what I like to do is, if I read something, I like to see who is saying it. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm still going to do my job. I'm still going to do what my mission is. And my mission is to bring us together, you know what I mean? My mission is a bridge, that, to build a bridge that can't be broken, a bridge that, that should have always been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So for me, that's not really irrelevant. I don't really look at none of that because everyone is trying to i feel like when people that say that have their own agendas mm. of saying that you know what i mean and coming back to the point of saying i said that uh, black people had no culture or whatever does that even sound like does that sound like something <laughs> if you if you read if you watch the video of the interview or whatever the little whatever clip which, if you can show me the part where I said <laughs> <laughs> that black Americans have no culture, if you can just that's all I need. If somebody can just show me that part, <laughs> then we'll, it, it'll all be put to bed. Do you understand? But at the end of the day, it's like people who who want, as I said, if I don't make something relevant, then it's not relevant mm. as far as I'm concerned. So it's like there's nothing I said that Malcolm X didn't say. Mm. There's nothing I said that Louis, the Honorable. Uh, uh, Louis Farrakhan didn't say. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But obviously, it's Burner Boy saying it, and he's from Africa, and you know what I mean? It's like, and it fits the agenda for your little group or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? It's like, all oh, that's beneath me. Mm. You understand? It's like, uh, my, my mission and my, and my, my movements is to, it's too divine for stupid shit like that. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? It's like, that shit is always gonna come. At the end of the day, that's some shit that I didn't even think about that I'm really glad you brought up. Like, I'm really glad you asked that question because it's like, yeah, like, people is really stupid. <laughs> like, people are really, really dumb. Like It was all over my timeline the last couple of days. Because of stupidity. That's how there's one guy that looks like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, he, he looks like a donut. He literally looks like a dancing donut. Like, <laughs> for me, it's like I'm now in a place where it's like, bro, I've created Afrofusion. Like, I've done all, like, you know what I mean? Like, I've literally been doing this for over, tw like, about 12 years now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like now, right now, where I'm at, I'm in a point where it's like I'm having so much fun. It's like now, it's like I'm just, I just want to do everything I wanted to do as a kid. Right. And just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just literally having fun with it. You know what I mean? So if you're over there, and at the same time as I'm having fun with it, I'm trying to, I'm still on my mission of building this bridge. Mm -hmm. it's, it just, it's just coincidental that you know, me building the bridge and the people I'm building the bridge to 
like which is obviously like the gods like the RZA and them it's like you know the people I actually I'm actually a fan of mm -hmm. as a kid like right. you know what I mean I wish DMX was alive <laughs> that would have made my whole fucking life you know mm -hmm. what I mean okay so that's Bar Boys uh, responding and addressing that okay so let's take a look at what he actually said let's put this up on the screen for everyone to see Burner Boy believes that there's something deeper at work when it comes to his popularity in the UK. Most of the people from the UK, if not all the black people from the UK and the people of color, they all know where they come from, he says. They know exactly where their roots are. This, he says, makes it easier for people to tune into his wavelength. It took longer for his music to find an audience in the US, this he says. It's a consequence of African American not having the same close connection with Africa. Unfortunately, the brothers in the U.S. have been stripped of their whole knowledge of self, he says. So it is a bit harder for them, you know. When he collaborated with U.S. rapper YG and Future, he says he was bringing my brothers home. So that's what Burner Boy said. And uh, I got to tell you, I don't find anything he said in that to be something that's questionable. I don't know why people got upset about this. He did not make any mention. I just read for you the direct quote from that interview and just like you your th your thought is as good as mine because none of the things that i've read for you all suggested any disrespect to the black american community he never said anything about black americans not having a culture you won't find it in any of the interview quotes you won't find it in any of the statement he never said it which is what he also said during that interview he had with complex uh 360 with speedy you wouldn't find it but then you find people on the internet running and attacking him, talking about burner boys attacking black people, talking about black people don't have culture, and you will never find this anywhere. He never made mention about this. He never said anything to that. He simply said that African Americans have been stripped of their African culture. I mean, are we? Is this is this lies? Is this something that is not true? Is it something that is like a a a new thing that we we that we're hearing this for the first time. I mean, you hear this even in the black, in the black American culture, that they've been stripped of their own ancestral culture. You, you hear this from the community. And you heard Bernard Boy said, it is because he's African saying it. Right? This is not something different from what Malcolm X said. This is not something different from Martin Luther King said. This is not something different from all the legends that we know in the black American community. And so why is it that when he says something close to what they've all said and we've all known, it's a known knowledge. He catches a type of flag for it. And that is kind of the bizarre thing with this because, you know, I, I wanted to understand what it is and I couldn't see it. If you guys know, please let me know. Is there something that you saw in that, that I've just, in what I've just read with for you all that suggested anything close to Burner Boy saying that black people didn't have any culture. Do you get what I'm saying? And then I've seen a lot of people kind of run with this, people that like to stoke division, that like to stoke a lot of animosity, they like the, you know, the kind of people that Burner Boy even recognizes, and most of us recognize, that like to kind of uh, stoke division between Africans and you know, uh, black Americans. People that ran with this whole nonsense, things, something that was not there. Right. I've even heard him say, OK, if he's saying that we didn't have any culture, then why is he, you know, appropriating, you know, hip hop culture in his new music or his music, you know, city boys. OK, so let's talk about that, you know, and they allude to the fact that, you know, he was dressed, he had dreads on, you know, the dreads. OK, uh, dreads is not African-American or black American culture. That is a Jamaican thing. That is something that even African-Americans or black Americans, whichever you know term you want to use. Uh, um, culturally appropriated from Jamaica. Dreads are, is a Jamaican culture. And Jamaicans obviously know that they borrowed that and took that from African continent. But nonetheless, they are the ones that popularize it. So that alone is a um, is false because that is not an African-American or Black American culture. That is clearly a Jamaican culture. They also talked about how he was wearing Timberlands. I don't know how that is black American culture because Timberland's the shoe was not made by an African American. That was made made by a a racist white person who was in a controversy that even had some statements made. Timberland's was even known to have made some racist terms and racist statement regarding why his shoes is not for black people, but yet black people wear Timberland's.
And so I don't know how Timberland is associated with black culture or somehow tied to black people. So I'm not sure exactly where in the whole music city boy that Burner Boy put together that supposedly is culturally appropriating hip hop or black American music. I don't see it. If you guys know, please let me know. Because none of the styles and look and feel of that whole thing to me suggests that this is somehow hip hop. If, if anything, it's a mixture of reggae. It's a mixture of hip hop. It's a mixture of pop culture. So I'm not really sure. I don't get it. But nonetheless. So again, this is one of those things that we see where we are, it, it goes into a lot of the type of uh, behavior that we see when it comes to Nigerians and the success and Nigerian artists. It almost, it almost comes off as a, a, an opportunity, right, to kind of stoke or dig at any time a Nigerian is successful or even dares to have a conversation that relates to black Americans, African Americans, and all of that. And that to me is kind of uh, one of those things that we're seeing. But here is uh, a black American sister who truly, I think, really addressed this the way it needed to be addressed and truly put this in its place. Here's a clip. Burner Boy catching backlash. And I get it. it. There's always been this underlying issue between black Americans and Africans. When Africans come here and when black Americans go to Africa, we truly realize that we are the same. We're all very flashy. Most of us are loud. Most of us are aggressive. We, we're very family oriented. We're each one, teach one type situation. You got them shoes, I want them too. You got that purse, you want them too. And everybody cook the same old shit. How your macaroni and cheese taste? How your macaroni and cheese taste? We all, we're, we're the fucking state. We can own, we can own businesses. You can say you're open at nine. Bitch ain't open until 12. You got to call somebody standing at the door to my, are you open today? I'm at the house. I'll be there in an hour. Can you wait on me? What the fuck? Like, I'm telling you. Why the fuck are you apologizing for saying that black Americans need to know where the, they come from? You do. You're saying that we don't have culture. We have culture that we adopted. Being descendants of slaves who are brought over here from Africa. But for him to receive backlash saying that black Americans lack culture, black Americans, whether we want to acknowledge it, our base is fucking Africa, period. And that's all he was saying. If black Americans went home and understood where they came from, then we would be more prosperous as a people. But because we're at odds with, with Africans and we're like, oh, that, we're not African, we're not, this is the fuck you are. You got niggas around here still running around us. Some of them American Indian. Oh my God. Wow. How the f Let's be honest. You still black. <laughs> Just like when a white person is fucking a nigga. You still black. Yo, you are black, Indian, white, but your base is Africa. Like, well, why is he receiving backlash when out of anybody that's doing music he's bridging it because yes they said well he's sampling for more art from from american artists that 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 he claims have no culture he's bridging the bl the black american music with african music and that's why he's selling out stadiums around the world and half of y'all worried about oh they coming over here to get a green card go get your green card in africa y'all need to go home i'm telling you y'all will have so much fun yo i couldn't agree with her more and Tasha K really said it all because I think that in what she said in that clip, there was a lot of truth and a lot of wisdom behind what she said. And we here at Corporate Junkie love Tasha K. And so this is one of the things that we, we, we see with the relationship with black Americans against anything Nigerians or Africans do. And, I've, and I would tell you, my personal opinion is this. Here's my personal opinion about this. I have seen a, a growing number of people within that community who somehow suggest to me that they're not with African success or this Afrobeat success. I have seen a lot of people with, on the internet, I've seen people celebrate our music. I've seen Asians celebrate our music. I've seen white people celebrate our music. I've seen content with Afrobeat 
you know, used in content creator, whether they're white, whether they're Hispanics, whether they're Indians, whether they're Africans, whether they're, you know, I've seen everyone, but you know what I have not seen? I haven't seen Afrobeat content with black American content creator or black Americans promoting and excited about Afrobeat. Now, are there? They're probably, possibly, but I'm telling you, I personally haven't seen this. And it's something that I often wonder why that is. And I can only conclude it has to do with this animosity that black Americans seem to have against Africa and against Nigerians. So because Nigerians are attached to it, Nigerians are successful with it, so we're not going to support it. And anytime one of our artists says something that is not even anything close to any offensive comment, they look for an opportunity in that to blow it out of proportion. Now, I'm glad that Burner Boy never did not apologize for that because he shouldn't have to because he didn't say anything that was offensive. He didn't say anything that should be taken out of context. He didn't say anything that should be that is uh, something that is a uh, that should be taken as a dig at the black American community. He didn't say nothing. And I'm glad that he stuck to his guns and didn't apologize because he shouldn't have to. Burner Boy rose to the fame and the popularity because of Africans in Nigeria, most especially, and also our Caribbean brothers and sisters, especially in the United Kingdom. And so that particular audience of group, why, while we embrace our African-American brothers and sisters, our black American brothers and sisters into the fold, the reality is that the reality is that Afrobeat became a huge success without their support or without their contribution to it. Now, we do love that black Americans enjoy Afrobeat. We do love the Afrobeat in the United States has also gained a great momentum. And we do love to see our black American brothers and sisters in it. However, when we start to see this type of petty and slander for no reason, you almost have to just kind of take a pause and say, you know what? Should Butter Boy have apologized? No, because his rise to fame was without this community. And so why should he have to bend backwards to really try to appease a community when he did not even say anything wrong. And so for the rest of us who are lovers of Afrobeat, continue to enjoy Afrobeat. For all our African-Americans out there who love Afrobeat, we welcome you. We are glad that you're here. Afrobeat is your music also. But to those ones who like to stoke division and try to stoke animosity, you're going to have to do it on your own time and do it solo because the rest of the world is right here and you're just the only one here isolated. Whether you like it or not, Afrobeat is a huge music genre. It's a mainstream music genre. It's a music genre that is here to stay. It's a music genre that's owned by Nigerians, popularized by Nigerians, created by Nigerians for black people to enjoy. And whether you enjoy it or not, Afrobeat train will always continue to grow fast and go hard and become successful. Maybe this gives you a sleepless night. That is a sleepless night you alone will have to bear. But the rest of us are enjoying black music, enjoying the collaboration, enjoy the unity that, that this music brings to everyone and connects us all. And I have to say kudos to everyone who supported Burner Boy who came to his uh, to his uh, defense, kudos to mainstream big artists and big legends in the industry who came to his defense. Kudos to everyone also who is African and non-African who came to his defense. And I am also coming to his defense that Burner Boy did not say anything, so get over it. Well, thank you all for joining me. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the content. Now